Hey friends, this is Derek Bros with the Conscious Resistance Network, and we're finally going to answer the question, is Jeffrey Epstein an agent of the Israeli Secret Service, the Israeli Mossad? But before we do that, please bookmark theconsciousresistance.com, go visit our website, maybe once or twice a week, get caught up with our latest stories, subscribe to our email newsletter, and all that good stuff. So let's get into it, guys. I've covered Jeffrey Epstein from nearly every angle. I've done the documentary, Bringing Down Jeffrey Epstein. I've gone to his trial. I've interviewed the lawyers involved. I have gone to his house. You know, I've been involved in a lot of different angles, and I've looked at different claims, including did Jeffrey Epstein get banned by Trump from Trump's Mar-a-Lago Club? We found that one to be inconclusive, or I'd say unlikely to be true. And now we're going to look at a claim that I hear from many of you, which is that Jeffrey Epstein is an agent of the Israeli Mossad. And sometimes the reason this claim is made is simple things like, well, he's a Jew. You know, look at his last name. So, of course, he's with the Israeli Secret Service. Obviously, I don't take those two claims too serious. But I did narrow it down and find that there were two general reasons why people seem to make this claim. And we're going to look at those. The first one would be that Jeffrey Epstein's sometime girlfriend slash... Uh, Madam, the woman Jill Zane Maxell, the woman who was responsible for helping Epstein get the young girls, the woman who got off without any charges, um, one of his you know, non-charged co-conspirators, is the daughter of this man, Robert Maxwell, who is now dead. He died under somewhat mysterious circumstances in November 1991. Some people say he was pushed off his yacht. Others say he jumped and committed suicide. Others think he faked his death. But what we do know is that this man was uh, a media mogul in his time, and he owned a lot of different uh, media outlets and was able to influence the media and obviously influence what people were thinking and shape their their thoughts and their uh, perceptions of the world. And once he died, of course, they, a lot of his kind of financial crimes were exposed, and you know, there's a whole bunch of scandals around his life. But what we're going to focus today is the allegations that he was working for the Israeli Mossad, and that does appear to be backed up somewhat. I'll, I'll, this is we're just looking at the Wikipedia page, which obviously is just a starting point. If you really want to dig into this, you're going to have to go a little deeper. But it does link to some real basic articles that talk about how uh, Ari Ben Manash, who is a former employee of Israeli's military intelligence director. Approached a directorate, approached a number of news organizations in Britain and the U.S., saying that Maxwell, Robert Maxwell, and the the Daily Mirror's foreign editor Nicholas Davies were both longtime agents for the Mossad. And he goes on and tells this whole story. Then Seymour Hirsch, long-term journalist, he also held a press conference and basically seemed to confirm that this was true. So what we know is that it does seem to be true that Robert Maxwell, the dad of Jill Zane Maxwell who was the madam slash girlfriend of Jeffrey Epstein, did seem to have ties to the Israeli Mossad. Now that alone, as I've said before, is not enough to convict somebody in a, in a criminal court or really any court, maybe the court of public opinion, but that is just guilt by association. You know, Just because your dad is a serial killer doesn't mean you are. Just because your dad's in a secret society doesn't mean you are. Just because your dad's in a secret service doesn't mean you are, right? So that doesn't strike me as strong enough evidence on its own, right? And then I also heard from some people about uh, Leslie Wexner. Now, what I'm looking at right here is the book uh, Filthy Rich, A Powerful Billionaire, The Sex Scandal That Undid Him. And it's the book by um, James Patterson that we talked about before on Jeffrey Epstein. And this is the book that makes the claim that Trump banned Epstein from the Mar-a-Lago. But I did find in that book this chapter on Leslie Wexner. And Leslie Wexner is another interesting character, the kind of fashion mogul behind the limited brand and Victoria's Secret, the Victoria's Secret fashion show. And this chapter here talks about him. He was the richest man in Ohio, born into a rag trade, a poor young Jewish boy who grew up, became very wealthy, and uh, became very close friends to Jeffrey Epstein, apparently. And they have a, a mysterious relationship that's described in kind of different ways where some people speculate that maybe they were romantic others say that you know he was just helping out epstein it seems it seems that epstein did work hard to untangle wexner's finances and it appears he succeeded jeffrey cleaned that up right away a former associate of epstein says the two men became all but inseparable and it says when wexner wanted to break up with a woman he'd been dating for several years he dispatched epstein to do the dirty work and it goes on 
a little bit further kind of discussing the relationship saying that Epstein even got the cast of cats to come perform in the mansion of Wexner's and you may know that Epstein has several different houses in different places New Mexico Paris New York obviously his island and it appears that his house which is the largest estate in New York City was given to him by Leslie Wexner by the the mogul behind the limited brand and Victoria's Secret fashion show and it's interesting because people speculate you can find different you know quotes from people saying that you know they weren't sure what they were up to they think that there was something shady and then the more you look into it, I get to this chapter here, and it talks about Jean-Luc Brunel, who I've talked about before in his modeling agency, MC2. That guy is definitely crazy. He was up to some nut stuff. And it's and it's alleged that Epstein was recruiting young girls via the MC2 modeling agency. It's also being um, alleged that Epstein may have been uh, recruiting girls from Leslie Wexner's Victoria's Secret fashion shows and says for Jeffrey Epstein Leslie Wexner is more than a mentor more than the last in a line of older men father figures whom Epstein cultivated while making his way in the world Wexner is also a steady if indirect source of beautiful women and of course like I said Wexner is in charge of the Victoria's Secret and what they write is that this means for Epstein a is models galore in fact, like a fox that's gotten hold of the lease to a hen house, Epstein, according to evidence later collected in a lawsuit brought by Epstein's victims, eventually provided financial support for MC2. So there is some kind of circumstantial evidence and claims that Epstein was working with Leslie Wexner, the guy behind Victoria's Secret and the limited brand, to recruit young girls. And it's also, why is that you know interest related or important to the whole Israeli Mossad issue? Well, let's take a look at it. The more we look into Leslie Wexner, and this is just from a blog, I will put all these links below. Sugar Daddy Leslie Wexner, Le Leslie Wexner, as Gawker reported nearly a decade ago, Epstein's wealth is built on a bizarre relationship with a single acknowledged client, Abercrombie and Fitch creator Leslie Wexner, one of America's most successful retailers. And it says persistent rumors swirled around Epstein's meteoric rise out of nowhere because it's still kind of unknown where Epstein's millions came from. And this is the thing is some say that, well, Wexner gave him the money in order to set him up so that he could run these secret sex rings and so he could help him recruit girls and do whatever he was up to. Um, others say, you know, it's because they had this romantic relationship. All we know is that as Gawker reported right here in 2008, that Jeffrey Epstein's apparent only client was Leslie Wexner, the guy from uh, this Victoria's Secret, and apparently he made Epstein very rich. It says, Monday's creepy, gentle profile in New York Times suggested that Epstein charged annual fees upward of $25 million a year for super elite financial advice. And it says, leading portfolios Felix Salmon to remark on the profitability of private banking. Bullshit. Epstein's wealth is built on a, quote, bizarre relationship with a single acknowledged client. Leslie Wexner. Now it says that loaded quote comes from an unnamed Wall Street acquaintance of Epstein who spoke to New York Magazine for a profile of him in 2002. There is no evidence whatsoever that the relationship went beyond the aid of the that of an aide to a mentor. But let's look this up. Here is this New York uh, review that they were talking about. And when I check out Wexner, it says another focus of curiosity is the relationship that Epstein has with his patron and mentor Leslie Wexner and found the founder and chairman of a Columbus Ohio based limited chain of women's clothing stores Wexner who is said to be worth more than 2.5 billion dollars by Forbes became an Epstein client in 1987 a Wall Street uh, person says it's a weird relationship it's just not typical for someone with such enormous wealth to all of a sudden give his money to some guy most people have never heard of and it says that some have speculated that Wexner is the primary source of Epstein's lavish life, but friends leap to his defense. Let me tell you, Jeffrey Epstein has other cl clients besides Wexner. I know because some of them are my clients. And one friend, a lawyer, Dennis Brock of Cal Codwallader, Wickersham, and Taft, says, I sent him a $500 million client a few years ago, and he wouldn't take it. He said the account was too small. Both the client and I were amazed, but that's Jeffrey. And it says Epstein's current residence in Manhattan, as I said, was originally bought by Wexner for $13 million in 1989. Wexner poured many millions into a full gut renovation and then turned it over to Epstein in 1995. So I think what I'm kind of showing you here, guys, and I, and I hope you're kind of getting the point, is I'm, I'm trying to establish that, yes, there is a clear relationship between Leslie Wexner and 
um, Jeffrey Epstein, right? We get that, right? But and, we're, and it does seem that maybe there's some kind of connection between Jeffrey Epstein's wealth and Leslie Wexner, but that still doesn't get us to the Israeli claims yet, does it? So let's look deeper into Leslie Wexner. Born in 1937, U.S. entrepreneur, civic leader, philanthropist, born in Dayton, Ohio. Um, he founded the Limited brand. He's the, founded the Wexner Foundation, the Wexner Heritage Foundation, the Wexner Heritage Program, which was designed to provide young American Jewish lay leaders with a two-year intensive Jewish learning program. All right. Um, 1988, the Wexner Foundation introduced a fellowship program for outstanding rabbinical students and graduate students in Jewish education. So he's very much involved with Jewish causes as he is a Jew. So that makes sense, but nothing specific to Israel yet. And then we get to this. In 1988, the Wexner Israel Fellowship Program was created. Annually, up to 10 outstanding mid-career Israeli public officials are selected to study for a master's degree in the mid-career program of Harvard Kennedy School of Government. So anyways, what it's showing here is that Wexner has created some programs that says as the end of 2005, 163 Israeli public officials have participated in this program, including leaders who have gone on to become director generals of government ministries. So he does have a close relationship with Israeli um, government officials. And this is probably one of the most important parts. It says that Wexner's leadership among major Jewish philanthropists was evidenced by his role in helping to convene and ultimately lead a group of some two dozen philanthropic peers in an effort that was known technically as the study group, but more widely as the mega group. This group of elite Jewish philanthropists was formed in 1991 and developed as an effort to conduct a high-minded philanthropic discussion about pressing issues of Jewish people. So the mega group, and that's, I found this about the mega group from the Wall Street Journal. Titans of industry join forces to work for Jewish philanthropy. When movie mogul Steven Spielberg, Seagram chairman Edgar Brofman, and former hedge fund man manager Michael Steinhardt met at his Manhattan apartment last month, the main topic was neither films nor high finance, but considerably more complex than either, being Jewish. The three men, among others, were convened for a meeting of the study group, also known as a mega group, a loosely organized group of 20 of the nation's wealthiest and most influential Jewish businessmen. So that was founded, the mega group, for Jewish uh, and Israeli interests and to promote those by Leslie Wexner, who again is very closely tied to uh, Jeffrey Epstein. And I found this from the Executive Intelligence Review, which is from LaRouche, the LaRouche publication. So take, take it for what you will, but it goes into a little bit deeper about Wexner and his association uh, with the mega group and uh, Israeli ties. And again, the further you look into this, you can see this is from 2008, uh, President George Bush's special delegation to Israel celebrating 60th anniversary celebrations for Israel, right? And this was an event taking place in 2008 celebrating that anniversary. You, of course, have Sheldon Adelson, one of the richest um, Jews, richest Israeli supporters in the United States, who has been backing Donald Trump, of course. And you get down here and you find Wexner somewhere on this list. There's a Wexner. Let me see. Wexner. Leslie Wexner. So Wexner appearing at this uh, meeting for lots of powerful Jewish uh, and Israeli supporters meeting with the U.S. presidency to talk about how to align Israeli and U.S. Um, policy and interests. And then we have this from the Free Press called the Wexner War. And this is probably the most interesting thing that I, I think I've seen so far. It says, we can only imagine limited founder and apparel magnet Leslie Wexner's consternation over the leaking of a document entitled Wexner Analysis, Israeli Communication Priorities 2003. The report was prepared for the Wexner Foundation, which is his organization, and provides insight into the relationship with the state of Israel. So, this document was apparently leaked or you know it got out somehow and it describes the plan apparently of Wexner's foundation again Wexner organized the mega group a loosely organized group of 20 of the nation's wealthiest and most influential businessmen and they get there to lobby on behalf of Israeli interests and it says so when the Wexner analysis report was leaked it caused a stir but no questioning of Wexner's little explored relationships with Epstein and this man named Fisher and basically other Israeli supporters and the Wes Wexner analysis document points out that quote many sympathize with the plight of the Palestinian people but there is no love lost for Yasser Arafat the report com complains that the emergence of Mahmoud Abbas as the new Palestinian prime minister comes exactly at the wrong time and basically, this is just showing that the 
uh, Mega Group and the Wexner Foundation, which are supposed to be just philanthropic organizations, nonprofit organizations that argue and fight for Jewish causes and Israeli support, put out a document or a leaked document. They had prepared a document that they probably didn't want to be pub public called the Wexner Analysis, Israeli Communication Priorities 2003. My point here is that the evidence is quite clear that Leslie Wexner uh, is definitely connected to the um, Israeli state in a number of ways and apparently had a very close partnership relationship with Jeffrey Epstein and possibly even funded Jeffrey Epstein in a number of different ways and that Jeffrey Epstein's longtime girlfriend and madam her father was tied to the Israeli Mossad as well does that mean that she was no it doesn't pr pr prove that conclusively but it does seem clear that Jeffrey Epstein is surrounded by uh, you know agents of the Israeli Mossad or at least people who care about what Mossad's doing and that does lend some credence towards the some credibility towards the um, the claim that Jeffrey Epstein's whole situation may have been what is known as a honeypot which is a blackmailing effort by the intelligence community in this case it may have been the Israeli intelligence community who are setting up Epstein in a position where he can bring in powerful people presidents and other Hollywood and political powerful people and leaders influential people get them into crazy stuff and then film it record it and then use that to blackmail them and that may be the case so it may be a case that the Israeli government the Israeli Mossad and the Israeli lobby have a lot of dirt on some powerful people in the US and internationally and maybe even Prince Andrew and others right so that could explain a lot of why America is Israel's little bitch and does whatever they say and that people don't dare question the Israeli lobby unless they get shouted down or called anti-Semitic or say that they're racist or they hate Jews. Yeah, so I hope that proves something to you guys that it does seem to be some truth to that claim. We'll have to keep digging to see what, what other evidence pops up. And if you've got more evidence, please send it over to me at Derek at the Conscious Resistance .com. Until next time, thank you guys for watching. Remember, you are powerful, you are beautiful, and you are free. Peace.